Hey, this is Tammy C. Walker, owner of Dreams Are a Reality. I hope you are doing good today. I am doing very well. I want to be able to get on camera, but I think some of you all that follow me know my schedule is a little bit funky, and I like to look cute on camera, at least decent. And it's just easier for me to um, do these videos or this podcast style early in the morning, plus I'm nice and my mind is fresh and I watch some YouTube videos and I do my routine in the morning and it's like these great subjects come to me, um, things I know can, that can help you and I know they can help you because it is things that I had to do for myself. Hit that like button, hit subscribe and welcome to this channel. It's all about light and love. My goal with this channel was to help others live their dreams and the main focus is i don't want you to be stuck on the past even when things didn't go well and think that that's going to be your future because it does not have to be a lot of what happens to us is how we view ourselves how we view our life and sometimes when bad things happen to us we get caught up in this matrix like that's how it's always going to be but the truth is we are in control of our life and what we feel we deserve at times is what we get. The sky is the limit. Trust and believe. And even when the past has repeated itself, it's a way that you can get out of that past and have a brighter future. I know that because I had to do it for myself. So let me give you some examples of some of the things I used to go through and also um, a story I told myself, I'll use love, my love life, and I'll also use finances. I'll just go with those two. I think I feel like those are two I was kind of caught up in a loop. So love life, um, I really didn't start dating until maybe 15, kind of, you know, messing around or whatever, 16 Okay, so the first guy that I liked, he actually had a girlfriend. And um, I guess you could say I was kind of like a little teenage secret. We, were, we all were teenagers, but we didn't end up in a quote-unquote relationship. But I felt like we had messed around a couple of times. But it really hurt my feelings because I felt like it was somebody I was real close to, good, good friends with. And it turned romantic, but I never ended up really with him. And I don't know if I really wanted him like that. It was just a weird situation, especially for a young teen. But that's kind of what happens when we are good friends with guys or guys are good friends with girls. You end up kind of crossing the line sometimes because you feel comfortable with that person. So I, I have been friends with this guy a long time. But that was the first thing that happened. Long story short, I didn't get chosen he stayed with his girlfriend. And for me, that was like, yeah, like it hurt, but I don't know if it hurt that bad. So sorry if that's not making much sense, but that was my first experience. After that, I started dating another guy and that one was on me. That guy was real sweet. We had fun together. We only dated probably under a year. At this point, I was a junior in high school and I think he was a senior because he was older than me. I think that's right. And he was so nice. My personality is, is a, I'm a nice, I, I hate to use the word nice. It sounds so, huh. but I am. I'm a nice person. I'm a kind. But in that case, he was um, nicer than me, if that's even possible. Because people say, you are just so sweet. Well, for some unknown reason, you all, I began to be not nice to him. Now, why on God's green earth would I do that? Because that is not how my parents raised me. But I figured that out at an early age. I'm very driven. And um, I just kind of know what I want in life, even as a teen. I guess I was that way. And he was wimpy. And one thing that bothered me was that he didn't stand up to his mom, which that's delicate. How do you stand up to your mom? You live with her. But I just it just turned me off at an early age. He worked and his mom would take his check and I told him I was like that's me why is she taking your check you're working hard and I just kind of lost respect for him it was certain things he would tell me that would happen and I was like Ugh, this guy he doesn't have any backbone so 
I think from growing up in a household with a strong dad, like my dad was the total opposite. Like, you know, just this big burly guy that what I say goes and then me seeing this wimpy guy, it turned me off. So I began to be kind of like, I don't know, I, I can't even remember the things I, were, I was doing. I definitely wasn't being very nice to him. I was kind of being dominating and I don't even remember. It's so fuzzy. I'm 51. I was 16 when I did this. I have no idea what I did to the poor guy. All I know is he disappeared. So me and Corey, that was his name. We, um, you know, we're dating, hanging out, having fun. It's summertime. I just remember all this fun stuff. And then, like, school started, and he kind of disappeared. And I'm like, what's up with Corey? No cell phones at this time. This is 1987. <laughs> we didn't have cell phones. Um, and we have, look, we have telephones now. We're not that old. Um, call our ID. And no Corey. He stopped calling. And some kind of, he, we went to different high schools, too. So I ended up knowing someone that went to his high school and I had them spying. And by me being like a junior, you know, upperclassman, and I had them spying on him. And they ended up telling me he ended up dating a freshman, like a very studious looking freshman, nerdy looking. I, I'm like, what the heck? He going to take a freshman over me? <laughs> so I'm just devastated. I'm just upset. So Virgo, crazy Virgo, I always mention my Zodiac. The Virgo works like this. Some of us, I work like this. I need to lay my eyes on this. If you tell me somebody cheating, somebody is cheating on me, I'm going to go. I need to go see it in color, live, in stereo. I need to see and hear it. So here I go walk into his house. He did not live that close to me. I cut school, which I never cut school. This is what happens when you are in lust or love. I don't even know what to call it. I cut school, go to his house. He opens the door, hickeys all over his neck. Well, I knew it wasn't for me. I hadn't seen the guy in a couple of weeks. And I was like, Corey. And I'm trying to make a dramatic exit in my purse. I had my little purse. They always carried a little purse. It got caught on to his door. And I'm like trying to get away. And the purse is stuck. I'm like, you know what? This is like a bad comedy movie. But I was so hurt. And he ended up coming back like, Hmm. probably months later, he came on my porch and rung my bell. And I'm like, yes. And he's like, hi, I just came back to see what you were up to. And I could tell he wanted to get back together. Of course, you are already know Tammy had moved on. That's one thing about me, the young version. <laughs> hey, hey, you come back around, Tammy has replaced you with a better model. And that's just how I rolled. It, it was fun. Look, fun times when you're younger. So that was the start of um, my love life. So first guy didn't choose me. Second guy, I really was not nice to him. So I don't blame him for going to someone else. But then he did come back. And I had, oh, God forbid, I had my ex-husband. My, my, my. Um, that was not good. We dated. The dating relationship was okay. And we got engaged, got married. And that's when the abuse started. So... I was so disappointed with that whole scenario. Um, I beat myself up. And people say, don't have regrets. I do. I do have regrets um, because I was an artsy person. I really wish I had just gone off to college, studied my musical craft. And I probably would have been, oh, my goodness, a music teacher, a, a famous singer. I don't even care about the fame part. But just to follow your love of music, that's what I wanted to do. And I noticed I like psychology, so I probably would have had a major in music and a minor in psychology or reverse it out. But yeah, that's what I would have did. I would have went away to college, but I got married very young. And to go through abuse and stupid stuff, I have regrets. People say, don't have regrets. I have regrets because that's not how I was raised to be abusive to people and curse people out and be, you know, treat people bad. And, and the part that bothers me the most is as someone that has experienced domestic violence you don't know how to get the hell out of it you just feel like oh my god i'm stuck here and the truth is and this is what hurts it just breaks my heart for any man or woman that has to go through domestic violence you don't know how the end's gonna be and you all see this over and over and it's so shameful and it's so sad that it's happening where younger 
people are killing, you know, their exes. If you do try to get away from them, these young guys, they're killing their girlfriend, you know. And it's not just gender. It can be a lady killing a man or, you know, same-sex couples. They're killing their person because they don't want to be with them no more. And that's just wrong. And it's so sad. And I just thank God that I got out without, you know, being killed. Because I did get hurt. He hurt my foot before. I had trauma from 1999 through 2019. Do you all hear how many years? 20 years of bad dreams of me running you know i'm in my dream it's a good dream i'm with a guy and then the guy turns out to be my ex-husband and then i'm the rest of the dream i'm trying to figure out how to get away from him so this shows you the trauma of domestic violence but that was my long uh relationship so that was like 11 years of my life marriage and dating then um i dated somebody else I dated a lot of guys after after we divorced. I dated, but they were short lived, like three months, six months, three months. It just and and my type again, my thing I do. This is all when I was in like twenties and thirties. Um, I date you, and if I see it's not working by three months, I'm like I had to speech with all due respect. I'm so sorry, this just isn't working out. And I'll give you some scenarios, quick ones. Um, one guy. He was working. He was doing carpentry work on the side. He had kids. He didn't have time for me. So I was like, yep, just not working out. Another guy, just a horrible relationship. Drama. Um, I think he was cheating. He did admit it years later. Uh, it was just drama. Just a bad relationship. Lasted way too long. And I just, uh, he, it was yeah, very toxic. Thank God I got away from him. Um, <laughs> eventually. It wasn't easy, though. I went through a lot of emotional stuff with that. Uh, Da, 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 da. I'm trying to think after him. Just little relationships. You know, guys that don't want to commit. One guy, he didn't really want to work. He, he was half working and it just didn't work for me. I can't. I can't. I had a couple of guys. They, right away, they were like all into me more than I was into them. And it was like scary. So I'm the type, if I'm into you, so I'm trying to get to know you and you're like overly into me and smother me. Yeah. I just take off running. Oh, God, I just can't. Even I'm still like that to this day. <laughs> it's got to be mutual. It's got to be mutual. Um, so I'm just babbling, rambling about my love life. But those are some of the scenarios that happen. Of course, the last guy, love of my life, the best, the best one. Say the best for last. That was the best relationship. And I'm still uh, very, how can I say it? I, I hold a special place for him in my heart. And we, we do communicate. And... That's, I'll just leave it like that. It's, it's to be continued. Hey, I finally figured out a time for it. To be continued. Um, but, okay, so I said, I'm telling you all, all of that to set up the story I told myself. I never get the guy. I'm never chosen. And that, when, I, when I'm saying this to you all, I'm getting kind of choked up. Because that's so sad that I felt like that. But I kept thinking about my life. And I was like. Even my ex-husband, he let me down, you know, with the abuse. Like, what? Who who gets married for that? And the other guy, it's, it's okay with the other guy. Where It was toxic. I get it. It was his stuff. You know, that was his dysfunction. But I got caught up in it. And then, oh, I left out one other guy that I went to high school with. That didn't work out either. He was still in love with his kid's mother. But that's okay. I'm not even mad at him either. You know, it's like. This is how you get released from this negativity. You, you know, even with the ex-husband, like I told you, all, you shouldn't have regrets. I do have regrets. But you still have to make peace with it. That was then. That's what I went through. When I was in therapy for the abuse and the ex-husband, my therapist said, Tammy, give him 50% and give yourself 50%. It, it sounds mean because I was, uh, you know, in a domestic violence relationship but still it was on me too because I chose to stay and I know why women choose to stay I know why some men choose to stay you're scared you don't know how to get out of it but it still was on me so I take you know I take responsibility for accepting that treatment I take responsibility for accepting bad treatment so that's what I want you to do today if you have a story you're telling yourself about your love life accept the responsibility 
for accepting subpar bad treatment. You already know what you deserve. You deserve the best. So we don't have to accept bad treatment. That's where it starts. You deserve the best. I deserve. Hey, say it out loud. Hey, I deserve better. I remember being at my last job. I hated that job. It wasn't a horrible company. I actually really liked the company. I liked the employees a lot. I did not like the work that I did. And I remember one day I was just so mad because I'm, I'm like, I got my master's degree in social work. I should be doing social work. I'm on this phone in HR. And I said it out loud. I deserve better. And that day that I said that, I was here in my house and not this house, my other apartment. And I started getting a lot of job offers. I started applying because I said it out my mouth. Power of the tongue. I deserve better. And here comes these jobs. I ended up with five like phone interviews, Zoom interviews. This this was the height of um, COVID. And boy, I, I got the job I have now. And I've been there almost two years. So I deserve better. You can make that your theme. And... Don't get caught up in that loop of all men are cheaters anyway. All these ladies, they, they're not about nothing. You got to get rid of that negative thoughts. The story you tell yourself. Only you know your story. What is the story you're telling yourself? I told myself I never get the guy, which is a lie because I didn't even have trouble attracting guys or getting guys. But I told myself that lie because those relationships did not work out. But your past is what brings you to current times. And the good part about it, you learn prayerfully from all of that drama, shock trauma. That's what I used to call it, drama, shock trauma. Because it it is drama and it is trauma. But if you are wise, if you are healthy, if you are mature, You learn from the past and hopefully, like my dear friend says, each relationship gets better and better, setting you up for better. So what is the story you are telling yourself about love? And these are the words I tell myself now. I am always chosen. I am respected. I am beautiful. I am kind. I am a giver. Um, I deserve the best. I deserve better. You know, I tell myself that because I do. And when you tell yourself these things, that's when better comes. And um, I notice sometimes when I talk to some women, when I talk to men, men don't do this as much. I always talk. I pick on the ladies because I talk to a lot of ladies. Men, they tend to not express their feelings as much as we do. They're more... Man, I just love men, by the way. I, I'm the type, I just have, I just love male friends. Haven't had as many as I've gotten older, but I love male friends. They are just so cool. They're pretty much what you see is what you get. Um, I just love to have conversations with men. Um, they're just different. Like, I have a coworker now at work. Um, I'm the female version of our counseling, um, I guess you could say, of our counseling team. And he's the male version, so he works with our team boys. And it's just so cool to to talk with him. Or like uh, yesterday, I have to hide from my students because they stay in my classroom. I can't can't even eat my little ham sandwich that I be bringing you all. So I might go in my coworker's room, his classroom, and and go in there for like 20 minutes and just kind of, you know, catch my breath (laughs) and get away from my little kids because they can stay in my classroom, which is fine. That's what I'm there for, to help them. But I have to step away and it's nice to run stuff by a guy you know we talk about sports and not really relationship stuff but just he's young he's a little young guy but very cool to talk to um but um what am I trying to say you all I done went on down that rabbit hole that I hate to go down my 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 anyway oh god I forgot what I was saying anyway I was talking about friendships and stuff but uh this is what I really want to end up saying you have to um, get that focus off the other person or uh, the, the having a relationship. Sometimes we can become obsessed with it. I got to get married. I want to get married. I want to meet a man. I got to meet a man. I don't want to be by myself. I don't see men doing that. If they do feel like that, they sure don't say it too much. But women, we become fixated. And sometimes we miss out on life. Um, like this year for me, 
you know, okay, yeah, I, I'm not engaged or not even where I want to be in that area of my life. But the other parts of my life is going really well. So I've been <laughs> I've been recruiting friends for trips. I'm like, hey, would you want to travel? Do you want to travel? Do you want to trip? Would you go? So, hey, in my mind, you know, once things feel better with this virus, and I think it's going in a better direction, that's the, that's the take I'm getting in my mind. Um, I got like two and three people saying, they yeah, go on a trip with me. So that's my little plan. I'm like, I'm about to get my travel on. At least go to a couple of places. Um, so focus on what you can do. Um, you know, do stuff for you. I bought myself a treadmill. Um, I have a client this week that says she can't make it on one of my evenings. So I already know that's the night I could jump on my treadmill. So do stuff like that for you. What about, um, what do you like to do? Me, um, I told you I've been having these weird sleeping issues. I got better sleep last night. Glory. Hallelujah. Um, so now I know another thing I like to do is get a massage. I have a lady, sweet lady. She massages me, my brother-in-law, my sister, my niece, my grown niece. When I was saying my niece, it's my grown niece. Um, and I plan on getting a massage pretty soon. I'm getting to go out with my friend this Saturday. We're going out for dinner. Um, this is someone I graduated with when I got my degree from Dominican University. Haven't seen her. Oh, God. With this virus? Two years, probably. Probably two years. So we get to go out for a nice dinner. That was hard to do due to Valentine's Day. Ugh. That Valentine's Day takes up everything, I tell you. So we did find a restaurant close by both of us. And that's where we'll be Saturday night, Saturday evening. So do stuff like that. I don't want you to think because in the past the relationships didn't work or you got mistreated. That's your claim to fame. That's that's then. Focus on what you can change and that's you and on brighter days. And I really want to tie that into career and finances. If you used to get low pay, and, oh, I worked at different companies. They never gave me good raises. That was my story, too. I did. I worked at Kraft Foods, uh, U.S. Cellular, Navistar. I had some really good companies I worked for. And I felt like the salary was like, ugh. But that's what I accepted. Now, the good part with Kraft uh, Foods, U.S. Cellular, Navistar, they had great bonuses. So maybe my raises were not good, but I got some really good bonuses. So, I made up for it in the back end. But what's the story you tell yourself? And when you do go for a job, this is the tip that I use. And it got me, it, this worked these last two jobs. It's got me decent salaries. Don't just say, I want 45000 Give me 50000 Get him a big range and go, go crazy on it. Chris Brown and go crazy. Go and say, I would like 49000 through 65000 Like, get them a big range and make them pay you what you deserve. If you're going hourly, let's go. I would like $20 through $35 per hour. Make them pay you that money you deserve. So we got to stop being a victim. We get ultimately what we feel we deserve. I gave ranges these last two times and... It worked and I got good salaries. And, you know, even recently, this job I met, they gave us the biggest salary, the biggest raise I ever got in my whole life. I, I thought it was an error because I had to look at it like four times. But that came out the blue a few months ago. I wasn't even expecting it because I had only been there a year. But they gave it to all, the whole company because why? We are counselors. We are in the inner city, Chicago, Kansas, Texas. We all over and we working with youth that are traumatized and that's some hard work. And they, they were losing counselors and they knew we got to pay these people if you want them to stay. So ask for what you want in love. Ask for what you want in life. Ask for what you want in your career finances, even if it's your own business. Go do your business plan. Expect a yes. Expect someone to invest in you. I don't care what happened in the past. You don't understand, Tammy. I, my, my stuff never works. It always fails. Uh, that's the end. I never get a good salary. Oh, I never get chosen. Hmm. I mean, you basically got to discredit that stuff. What, what do one guy say that I follow on YouTube? I can't compute. I don't understand what you're saying. If you are 
talking to a guy or a lady and things are going okay you know okay so so whatever it's kind of beginning it can be your old love it don't matter they start saying something to you that you don't agree with uh, i know i've done this kind of recently you know not this year but maybe last year i'm talking to you know and he's like saying something that really don't match with uh, i'll be like whoop uh oh um let me go i gotta get off this phone i gotta run and take some out of my oven i'll say anything because I'm not trying to hear, I'm not trying to hear no negativity, or not even negativity. I'm not trying to hear something that don't match with what I'm trying to do. Uh-oh, let me get off this phone, because I'm not great to argue. I'm not arguing with nobody, you know, within reason. If I feel like I'm right and it's something important, of course, I'm going to say. But overall, I'm not going to argue if something's not going quite my way. Mm -mm, I don't, you know, and I said, and I, uh, mm -mm, I don't do that. No, 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 no. We don't have to do that, because we better. So it's all about raising your vibrations, what you want, what you feel you deserve. Stay on what you feel you deserve. You know, like I just said, I am chosen. I am respected. I am always chosen. I'm respected. You can say I am a fiance. I am a husband. I am a wife. Whatever you want it to be, say that's what it is and stay on that. But don't go back to the past and the negativity. Stay positive. Stay in your future self and if you don't have the man or woman right now work on you go solicit some people for a trip <laughs> go work out go um, start a new hobby like my sweet friend she just started a new blog on decorating her house see I just love it that kind of stuff draws in like good energy because you're focusing on you and that's the key to life what are you focusing on if you focus on negativity that's what you got to get if you focus on positivity, watch your life change. Not telling you what I think I know. I'm telling you what I had to do for me. On that note, I'm going to get on out of here. Start my morning, my day. You have a good day. Keep your head up. Keep your chin up. Forget the past and focus on your bright future. Tammy Sharice Walker, Dreams Are Reality, signing off. Bye-bye.